Okay, hey guys, and welcome to another exciting week at theunderwaterrealm.com. This is week 39, and first of all, I'd like to start by apologising for the terrible soup strainer that I'm adorned with at the moment. It is, of course, Movember. Um, if you don't know what that means, please visit uk.movember.com, where you can donate. It's a wonderful charity raising awareness for prostate cancer by growing ridiculous facial hair in the month of November. So this week we're going to be talking about colour grading. We've had a number of questions coming in based around one of the videos that we uploaded a few weeks ago, uh, which you may or may not have seen, from our Egypt shoot. So here's the video. Uh, it's first of all, starring a beautiful turtle. It's about the size of the sofa that I'm sat on at the moment. It's absolutely colossal, head the size of a melon. Um, but you can see here we actually colour grade this footage, and it goes from quite a murky green into a much more vibrant blue um, with a uh, much more colour contrast between the foreground and the background there as well. So makes a huge improvement to the shot. Um, this is a shot from the Red Epic camera courtesy of Tom Hamilton of Red Sea Pictures that came out and kindly uh, brought his expertise and equipment to bear for our shoot in Egypt. Um, but we're going to be talking about colour grading, specifically how this was achieved, why it was achieved and the way in which we shoot to allow this level of colour grading to happen. Now colour grading is very simply put, it's, it's kind of photoshopping your images, it's, it's adjusting the colours and the brightness of your image once you've shot it to make it exactly in line with what you want. Now that's partly about improving the shots that you've got in camera, um, enhancing them perhaps I should say, but also uh, aligning them with the other shots in the sequence to make sure that you've got kind of a colour continuity throughout the scene. And there's all sorts of colour theory about different colours that affect different moods and of course we can get into that at depth and talk at length about it. For anybody that hasn't ever really seen a colour grade or doesn't really know what colour grade is, go and watch The Matrix. Every single shot in the real world, very very blue. Every single shot in The Matrix, even before you know it's The Matrix, very very kind of green and insipid in line with the code of The Matrix itself. So it's a very very powerful storytelling tool. Um, but also very important from a technical aspect to get the most out of your footage. Some people think you should shoot a very neutral um, colour space and, and kind of make your image as bland as possible in camera so that you have more flexibility in post. Other people argue that maybe you should shoot everything exactly as you want it and just polish it in post-production. We kind of sit on the fence there. It's important to know exactly where you're going with the shot before you roll your camera, otherwise you're not going to know exactly what to tell the camera crew, what to tell the art department, what to tell your actors. You really need to know what your movie's going to look like, but of course you don't want to damage that shot that you're capturing in camera. You want to be very, very delicate with it and know that you can push it a long way in post-production and still hit undo. But of course, shooting underwater brings a whole new level to the idea of colour grading, which is something we've been doing for years. But shooting underwater is just its a whole other creature. As with everything else, it's a whole new set of skills to learn. Now this is first and foremost because every different body of water you get into is going to have a different colour based on the season, based on where it is in the world, based on what, whether it's salt water, fresh water. We've seen massive variances between blue and green, but also every time you change depth you're changing the amount of red light and also the overall brightness of your shot because of the way water interacts with light coming in from the surface. In addition to that we've got the, uh, the issues of lighting underwater with artificial light and then of course we've got the visibility of the water. The, uh, the cloudier the water, the brighter your blacks and the less contrast you get overall. So it's really, really important, firstly, to maximise the quality of the image that we've captured, but secondly, to make sure that it matches the shot before and, of course, the shot afterwards. So it's kind of a trick to get it exactly right, but you can see from this example with the turtle that it makes a huge difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you to the screen of my computer. We're going to go into Adobe After Effects, and without using any external plugins, just the stuff that comes with After Effects straight out of the box, I'm going to talk you through the basic principles of how we colour grade some of this underwater footage from Egypt. Okay, you're with me here inside Adobe After Effects where we've got our shot of our friend the turtle. Uh, first of all, let's just give you an idea of exactly how big this image is because size does matter, so I'm told. Um, so this image it doesn't look too much from here, but actually when you uh, compare it to a 1080 full HD image, that's the difference absolutely phenomenal difference. So an HD image would barely cover just the area of the screen that's got the turtle in it. Um, and as we zoom into 100%, it's a little bit soft this image, but absolutely massive nonetheless. So let's just pop that down into quarter resolution so it's a little bit quicker to work with. We're with the R3D file or the, the camera file straight inside of After Effects. No kind of recompression or re-encoding needed whatsoever. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to do a very quick adjustment just to show you how powerful this software is 
and exactly how much of a difference it can make, what are the dramatic difference that it can make to your image. So first of all we're going to start playing with the light levels. So we're going to go into color correction, we're going to choose levels. Very very simple, this is a very mathematical way of looking at how your image is exposed. It uses a chart called a histogram um, and you can see here in the dark area we have no pixels. So what we're going to do is we're going to remap our dark area to line up with our dark pixels and we're going to remap our light area to match our light pixels. We're not going to go all the way to the light pixels because it's not the sort of image where you really see anything that's that brightly exposed. Uh, and then we've got this central one here. This is gamma. This is uh, exactly where your, your kind of midpoint is. Um, so we're going to adjust that to taste and we're going to say that our image should be exposed around about there. Now immediately that's already made the image pop much more. That's the original, grey and muddy. And that's a lot more detail, a lot more contrast. Although technically it's still the same image and we haven't thrown anything away. It just, it's a little bit easier on the eye. Now, that's not because there was anything wrong with the image to start with. It's supposed to be like that because it's protecting all that information. But now we're just making it a little bit uh, more friendly to look at. Now, the problem here is that it's a very kind of insipid green. There's not a lot of color contrast here at all. Everything is a shade of greeny blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to start making some changes there. And we're going to use a really powerful piece of the software called Selective Color. Overlooked um, and actually fantastically powerful. It's a way of adjusting your colors based on their primary secondary colors um, and then the component colors within there. Now that all sounds really really complicated but what it basically means is the entire image is made up of red, green and blue and also the colors in between those yellow, cyan and magenta. Um, and you've also got your whites, your blacks, and your neutrals. So anywhere where those colors are kind of in harmony would be a, a, a neutral color such as white, gray, or black. So you can adjust any part of the image you want, really, um, and you can adjust it by playing with the cyan, magenta, or yellow. Now, first of all, it seems like you wouldn't be able to change green, but actually green is the opposite of magenta, so you just slide magenta down to negative 100, and you've got yourself green. Now, of course, nothing's happening as I'm doing this, and the reason nothing's happening is because I'm set to red. And there is no red in this image at all. As I said, it's all greeny blue. So if we go over to our cyan, which is the, the technical term for greeny blue, um, we want to demonstrate how to remove some of that green from the image. Now, green is the opposite of magenta. So if we take the magenta value and we slide it up, our image changes dramatically. Huge change there. Too much of a change. Um, but actually, we dial it in to taste I quite like it around about 60, 63. So that's just taken a little bit of the harshness out of this background area, but it hasn't done too much in the foreground, which is actually exactly what we want. It's barely changed the turtle at all, but it's changed the water behind him an awful lot. And our whole process here is all about creating color contrast between the background and what we want the audience to look at. It's just like setting focus with shallow depth of field. It's all about drawing the audience's eye to what you want them to look at. So what we're going to do now is we're going to enhance that difference even further. We're going to take our greens, which is what I'm guessing this turtle is going to be registering as, and we're going to try and make him different to everything else. Now what we were adjusting before was the cyan. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the cyan and we're going to go negative cyan, which is another way of saying plus red. And as we do that, we see the turtle start to pop out of the background. And we turn that off and back on again. Bang. And it's immediately drawing the eye to the turtle, even more so than before. If you're unsure about what area of the image you're adjusting, for example, if I get rid of that cyan adjustment, you can toggle the black up and down, and as you do so, it kind of flashes, and it kind of gives you an idea of exactly what area of the image you are adjusting. Now, I actually quite like this with a little bit of a brightness boost, because that's going to further, the, the background is obviously darker than the foreground here, so by giving that a bit of a boost, and going back into our cyans, and maybe giving that a bit of a crush, not too much, just a bit we can actually really start to feel the difference that we're making here and we're creating a contrast. Now I'm not going to do too much in this first selective color because I want it to be very very straightforward. We're just adjusting the greens and adjusting the cyans and pulling them further apart to create color contrast because it's really really easy to just create another adjustment layer and another selective color over the top. Um, we're going to go into our cyans again and we're going to start screwing with our cyans just seeing what difference that makes. Oh yeah, take a little bit more green out of the cyan and we've got this rich purpley color in the background. It's probably a little bit too purple. And pump a little tiny bit more cyan back into it. And let's take a little bit of yellow out of there. Not too much. But you get a basic idea. And you can see how much of the extra detail it's brought out here in the rays of light. 
And you can go in and you can nail those in and, and pull that apart as well from the background. Separate your, your brightness and your cyans from your dark blues. It's a bit rough and ready. If I show you the original, the original had a little bit more care and attention. Had about five minutes spent on it. Um, you can see we've put some levels, layers over the top here to create like a letterbox crop. Um, but this image, again, very simply is levels, selective color, push and pull that selective, selective color around and then crush it in with the contrast with the curves. And what we've done there as well is we've looked at this and said that's probably a bit purple. In fact, let me delete that last selective color. Probably a little bit purple in there. So what we're going to do is just take that and we're going to choose color correction, selective color, choose blue for this area and just take out some of that magenta, a little bit more and we're at a much more natural feeling water. Um, switch all of those off, original image, back in exactly where we want it to be. We're bringing out the detail here in the shell and we're showing up exactly where each of these rays of light is hitting the ocean floor there um, and indeed even cutting through the water. So if we just do a little quick RAM preview it's going to render a load of those frames into the RAM of the computer and you can see just how clear we've made it feel here, how much further you can see into the background and how much detail is coming out and really singing and popping out of the screen there. So play that back. Lovely turtle swimming in what feels like transparent water, like completely transparent, beautiful water that's just cutting the light through. Uh, and as we toggle that off, or in fact just kind of pull this adjustment layer to the side, you can see where we were before. And it's just a completely different feeling. Um, and that is the power of color grading. So that gives you an idea of the sort of thing that we're up to with the footage. Um, I'm sure you'll see much more of it over the next few weeks. Um, I'm going to go and crack on with finishing off the rest of this footage. And I will catch you next week at theunderwaterrealm.com.